The word is border, B-O-R-D-E-R, -E and it's from the French bordure, so it means an edge. So a border is where something ends, it's also where something begins. And if we think about political territories, obviously the border is the boundary outside a country. It's also a space of transition where one country starts and another country finishes. Some borders are natural borders. If we think of the English Channel between England and France, constructing the border between those countries. But lots of political borders are unnatural borders. If we think, for instance, of the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, you might not notice that you crossed a border until you see the signs have changed. There's Irish on the signs. The prices are in euros instead of pounds. If we think of the birthplace of border studies, which is the US-Mexico border, the border there might take the shape of a fence. There might be barbed wire trying to keep people out of the United States. And if we think further north in North America, to the border between Canada and the United States, this has been celebrated for a long time as the world's longest undefended border. So instead of imposing a fence along this border, what we have is a cut line often through trees, a gap through nature that separates one country from the next country, even though at that point they look exactly the same. And sometimes you can cross a border without even seeming to leave the country. In Canada, you can clear U.S. customs, ostensibly on the other side of a border, while you're still standing on what looks like Canadian territory. You may have just stepped behind a fence, and all of a sudden you're supposed to be in someone else's country. So what I think is really interesting about political borders is that often they don't really exist. They're not really there, and yet they're really important to how the world is structured and have so much of an impact on all of our lives. In the context of the Americas, all of these borders were drawn by European settler invaders or the descendants of the European settler invaders. So for indigenous people, those borders don't really exist. The Canada-US border cuts across the territory of various indigenous nations, and for them, the border is only an arbitrary construct. It isn't really there. So we have to think about the power of drawing borders and the ways in which borders are often determined by cutting lines across maps in an arbitrary fashion in ways that may be disputed by a number of different groups that find themselves suddenly on one side of the border or the other.